Empire. This is Mr. Clifford with ACDC Econ, Key Concepts in 60 Seconds. Today we're going to talk about excise tax. They get kind of tricky. It's going to shift the supply to the left. It's going to raise the price, decrease the quantity. But the price that consumers pay is not how much the producers get to keep. And you're going to find out that consumers and producers have to pay part of this tax. Okay, okay let's start the clock. Here's the questions we've got. Tax per unit, tax revenue that goes to the government, total spending by consumers, the net meaning after taxes, revenue that firms get to keep, and who pays more of this tax. I suggest you pause this video before we actually start and see how you did. Let's go ahead and begin. Ready and go. The first question is tax per unit. Well, if you look over here, you can tell the vertical distance between the two supply curves from 7 up to 12, from 8 up to 12, from 3 up to 7, you can tell it's 4. $4 is the amount of the tax. I don't know again, it's the vertical distance between the supply curves. The next question is, how much is the total tax revenue that goes to the government? Well, it's a $4 tax, which you can see again, is right there. $4 tax, good $4 times the new quantity, which is 10, is 40. That's how you ended up getting that. That box is sitting right in front of you, it's right there. Good. The next question is, how much is the total spent that consumers did? Well, Consumers spent twelve dollars. Twelve. They bought ten units. This big red box right here, all the way down. That red box is twelve times ten, which adds up to one hundred and twenty. Now I'll tell you right now. All I have to do is now subtract the tax revenue from one hundred and twenty, and that'll tell me exactly how much producers got to keep. But I can show it to you on the graph. They didn't get to keep twelve dollars. Producers didn't get twelve dollars. They got twelve dollars and paid for the government, so they kept eight. And if they kept eight, you can tell. Down here, 8 times 10, which is 80, is how much they actually get to keep. Good. That right there is the net revenue that goes to firms. The next question is, who pays more as tax? Well, they get to share the tax. The price went up for consumers 2 bucks. It went down for producers 2 bucks. They both share the tax. It's right there. Done. And bonus round. Now, it's just not that easy. If you can see this, that's awesome. But there's other things happening at the same time. Your teacher is going to ask you some questions, usually about something called deadweight loss. Okay, notice up here before consumer surplus, uh, what people would have paid, what they did pay was 10. That's before the tax. It was right there, that big triangle from here, here, here. After the tax, it looked different. As you can see, that they're willing to pay was here. They actually ended up paying $10, I'm sorry, $12. So consumers, right, surplus is sitting right there. Consumers surplus. Producer surplus, well, they used to be wanted to sell it for this supply curve, and they sold it for $10, but not anymore. They only get $8. Remember, they had to pay that tax. So the producer surplus is down here. Producer surplus is right there. But you can tell producer surplus before was this big triangle. There's less producer surplus, less consumer surplus. The result is there's some consumer surplus that used to exist that doesn't, and some producer surplus that used to exist but doesn't, and that's called something. That's called dead weight loss. Dead weight loss is the lost consumer and producer surplus when the government has come in and done something to the market. So when the supply curve shifts to the left, this quantity 10 is produced, the quantity 12 is no longer produced. So the 11th and the 12th units that people used to buy and the producers who used to sell them no longer are being produced. And so the consumer and the producer surplus from those units are gone. Dead weight loss. Until next time.